Welcome to Drupal Nights, uh, sponsored by BioRack. Tonight we have Alejandro Garza talking about Apache Solar Search. Take it away. Thank you. So, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, so, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Drupal and Apache Solar. Um, it's a topic, I guess, that, that you know, it's been out there for a little while, and um, hoping that I can, you know, clear up some questions or just, you know, maybe introduce a few things that might be new to everyone. So, um, who am I? So, I am a co-maintainer of some of the solar-related modules in Drupal.org. Um, I've been working with Drupal since a while back, since like Drupal version 4.5, I think. I said 4.7 here because, you know, I was kind of in the middle of uh, when 4.7 was coming in uh, when I started. So, I'm also a support engineer working out of Acquia, uh, and I specialize in search issues. So. I basically work all day helping people out, you know, with uh, things that have to do with search, you know, among other things. So um, I, I kind of have a good idea of what the problems that, you know, prop up are and how to attack some of those. And there's a link to my um, Drupal.org profile in case you want to take a look. So for today, um, I want to talk about just a few topics. Um, just introduce a little bit about search and why you know I think it's hard. Um, I'm gonna do some demos with Solar. Uh, this will be a little bit just Solar, not Drupal, so we get a feel of how it works and uh, how it, you know it actually receives input and searches and matches things. And that's probably an eye opener I feel uh, for a few people. And then I'll just go into Drupal and you know show again demo some of the things that you can do in Drupal with solar. Okay. So for now, I was, you know, trying to see from the room if anyone was interested in any topic in particular. Um, I heard a little bit about some people wanted to know just, you know, what is solar? You know, how do I, you actually use it? So I can start with that. If anyone has anything to say. Oh, okay. So just move on. So search is hard. The thing is, we can't read the customer's mind, we can read what they want. Um, and it's often that they come to our site via Google, via, you know, just they have a link to us, but maybe they can't find what they want inside our site. So it's important to make that place where these two regions meet to be, you know, as big as possible. Sometimes, you know, maybe a visitor will be of how you can do some things with Drupal in order to help you out when you're using solar as part of your site architecture. So search is a nasty issue. It's an, like a huge topic. I wouldn't really go into it. I mean, it has to do with UX, you know, information architecture. There are a lot of people who, you know, like throw spears at each other, you know, whenever these words come up, so I won't go into them. But for me, I mean, the things that I see uh, when customers come to me and, and, and ask, you know, what can I do to actually make search better? Uh, which, you know, by itself is a huge question. One of the th basic things that you want to look at is, for starters, is your content that you have in Drupal or whatever CMS you have, you know, is that fielded? Is, are, are you actually separating out your data into bits and pieces? Or are you just, like, dumping every single thing into a big text, you know, field? So we want to actually separate things up so that then we can, you know, do things to it. So... Also, you know, does your navigation in your site and the search, does that use this? So later on, I'll come up with some examples that kind of, you know, reflect on this idea. But it's important because we don't just want things as a single big blob. Um, also, you know, what are you doing to expose your data to Google? You know, there are ways to do that. You may have not thought about it, but, you know, you actually want to do a little bit of thinking about it. Um, and you know, do you know what's going on on your site? You have metrics to every single one of them, but it's something to just keep in mind. So some people also come to me, you know, asking, why do I even need a site search? Or why solar? Why, why can I use, you know, just a Google search appliance or whatever to search my site? I'm doing fine. So Google, you know, um, they're the number one traffic generator for a lot of sites. I put a question mark in there because, you know, that may not be true for everyone, but it's true for a lot. Um, what you get when you go to, to Google is, you know, you, you get a search across all your 
HTML, you know, that shows up on your site and, you know, even your files. But it's more of a things are a blob kind of thing. It's not, you know, very uh, split up, except in some cases, but, you know, I'll, I'll go into that later. Um, it's also kind of targeted, you know, not that much. You know, Google does do a lot of um, um, understanding of what you are, you know, who you are, and tries to give you content that's relevant to you. But it's kind of out of your control. Um, and Google, of course, has a lot of secret sauce in the form of billions of dollars, you know, lots of engineers doing stuff to search every day so that they, it gets better. Um, so yeah, so why have a site search? So you are more in control of what, you know, you're offering and how things match. You know, you may not be Google, but you still have, you know, your data. And you can control what's going on with it. You can target it in different ways to different users. I mean, if you have things like users logging into your site, maybe they subscribe to some certain forums in your site or, you know, you have stuff that, that they're, they're giving you out, like, you know, what their location is, what their language is, you can target search according to that. So what's your secret sauce? You have all of this data inside Drupal. You know when stuff was created, you know who created it, you know even some info about them. You can use a lot of ways to target search and you know your site architecture in general to your customers. So in terms of solar, solar is the thing that you use uh, to power search. Um, I mean, it's one of the, w the, the various ways. So, Solar is basically a uh, Apache project. Uh, you can install it mostly anywhere. It runs on Java. And then you can, um, you know, do a lot of things with it. Uh, mostly is, uh, it's all centered around search. So what happens in Solar is it does a lot of, I mean, it takes your input, it processes it, it processes it so that it you know, the input gets split up into words, that's the tokenizing. It also knows about synonyms and stop words. So synonyms, you could say things like, you know, this word is the equal to this other word, and then it'll actually keep that in the index. Whenever you search for one of the words, it'll actually, you know, provide a match. Does it provide its own synonyms? There, so if I type in MA, does it go, oh, you mean Massachusetts? There, I mean, it provides a uh, very simple synonyms file, but you can actually just configure that to whatever you like. And there are lots of, um, you know, projects out there that, you know, freely give out their synonyms text file so that you can, you know, use those if you want to. But the thing is, and that's why search is, is hard, you may not, you know, directly use that. Maybe, you know, if you were just using a synonyms file that has Massachusetts equals MA, Maybe that doesn't work for everyone, you know. Um, so maybe you have a class, you know, maybe a school site, and maybe MA is the code of some of the classes. So then, you know, matching things for Massachusetts when you actually wanted a class like MA 101, maybe Mathematics 101, would not be the best. So, so that's why you have to think about these things. But yeah, stop words, I mean, you can define them or you can just download a set of files from, from the internet. So things like, a, D, you know, some of those words that don't really have meaning, you would use those, and those are available. So it also does stemming, and, you know, just as an example, it does stemming, but it does a lot of different kinds of linguistic processing. So there are algorithms written around processing languages in a way that you'll get matches, um, and those are very, very varied. Um, I'll actually just pull up one of those. So for instance, this one, uh, this is a document from uh, the Apache Foundation. I actually need to probably see if, yeah. I'm not sure if that can be read, um, but I'll try to get it in there. So there are a lot of filters which are basically processing portions in solar that you can configure. Um, so maybe the names here don't really you know, make any sense. But e they each have a different way of processing uh, the input so that, that you can match it. For instance, uh, the Soundex filter or the Metaphone filter, they work on phonetic versions of the words. So if you have someone that does, you know, a misspelling of a word, but they still get the phonetic version of the misspelled version right that matches, you know, some other correctly spelled word that has the same phonetic version, you know, then things match and 
voila, you get results. And there are a lot of things here, like uh, if you were to look at things like Japanese language, they need to be split up, the, the, the data, the Japanese data uh, needs to be split up in different ways than English languages or you know, some other uh, Germanic languages. So there's a lot of um, things that you can do with solar. Uh, if you're just like an English speaking site and you don't have to worry about all of those things, uh, you can use like a ba very basic and well known set of things, uh, set of configuration in your solar server, and then you'll have you know, things just working. But if you want to do something special, there are ways to do it. So this is all for processing. Um, again, this is all how data gets sliced and diced and gets put into solar. Now, there are a lot of ways to actually query the data so that you get results back. So there's a, for instance, you can do a per field matching a query. You can do a per field boosting of, of things that match your entered query. So for instance, if you're looking for mathematics, you could say that maybe, and maybe you have a, you know, a course uh, website, you can say that the you know, course name is very important. Or you can say maybe some categories that you're assigning to these courses are the things that should be more important you know, in matching the text that was typed. So you can do a lot of that uh, you know, configuration. And all of that is done qu at query time. It doesn't have to do with the actual processing. You can also do boosting, meaning things will show up further in your search results. They will show up you know, closer to number one search result. That's what boosting means. Uh, for instance, be a phrase or non-phrase matches. You may want you know, things that appear as a phrase to match better. And things like function queries, which are like if given a set of things that are matched, maybe you want to say, well, but the things that were created more recently need to you know, show up uh, you know, closer to number one instead of the rest. So you can define a function that's either you know, a logarithm function um, or some other, like a linear function that depends on the timestamp, for instance, or you know, some other value. For instance, if you want to, to do sorting, that you can also use that here. So just to illustrate how complex, I mean, you, how, how far you can go with solar, this is um, something that you can install in Drupal. This is uh, a site that I can actually show you. I have a live version right here. Uh, but this is just a screenshot of what happens when you're searching for something. And I have this block here called the Solar Query Debugger. This is powered by Solar Devel module. So below this, you're not seeing this, but below this would show just the normal result number one, result number two, et cetera. But you can dig in using the Solar Devel and see what Solar is doing you know, on the back end. For instance, just this simple two-word query, this was actually typed without the quotes. It gets converted and, and sliced and diced in several ways, so that then we get like a per-document uh, algorithm um, calculation that you know, tells us how high to score that first result. You know? So I won't go into detail over here, but you can see how Mexico Books then becomes just Mexico space books and then it also adds this which is a search for the phrase Mexico space books and you can see this tilde thing which means um, be fussy about my search and then it also says um, boost this by a factor of eight you know that, that's what this carrot symbol means so uh, this gets complicated real complicated real quickly and then it gets you know converted into further, uh, deeper, and simpler representations of how things are actually searched in solar. So I can actually show you this later on, like bit by bit. Um, and this part below, you can see how you know it's very complex. <laughs> so this is the secret sauce. I mean, it's hard to control because it's all algorithms, but you have control over it. You can uh, boost things differently. You can you know, specify the searches to be you know, you can, you can tell solar how to process things differently. Um, so it's all under your control. The thing is, it's not simple. You can decide to do simple things and then, you know, try to change all the algorithm and how it works. 
but you ha you you're gonna juggle a lot of variables. But that's not bad. That's good actually. <laughs> So Solar also does a lot of more nice things that you know have to do with searching. So for instance, uh, it does highlighting out of the box, and it takes into account all of that language processing that I did. For instance, you know if you search for maybe parking, you know it, it will search for um, for things like well actually this is a bad example and it actually illustrates one of the bad ways you can you can uh, one of the pitfalls of using Solar. For instance or worker, it'll match things that, you know, match working, for example, but it'll still highlight the word working. So you, uh, you know, a visitor looking at that will actually see why um, that matched. Yeah. Does it learn such that every time you search for parks and there's parking results and no clicks on them, does it learn that those aren't the best results because the snippet is inaccurate? No. Yeah. Solar is basically doing the search and returning results. You could probably then learn, I mean, you, you would probably have someone that, you know, has some sort of intelligence uh, feedback, they, some analytics, uh, and they, then they could make decisions like that, you know? And that's why it's good that it's under your control, but then you would have to make the call that that needs to happen, you know? So the other thing it does is spell checker, which is not really a spell checker in terms of a dictionary, like, look, you know, looking up words against a dictionary. It basically, looks at the words and then compares that to the words in the index. So it offers you uh, a kind of, did you mean this? You know, if you maybe type work, you know, it misspelled work, it'll tell you, did you mean work, you know. Elevation, this means you can actually uh, do a hard override and say, whenever someone searches for parking, I want this page to be the top of those results, you know, always. So you can do that with Solar. More like this means uh, whenever you're seeing a content, you know, let's say you're like you're looking at this class Mathematics 101, it'll show you things that look like this page. So and you can define how it def it it defines that a thing is similar to this other thing. So it keeps customers in your site, you know, because they just click keep clicking on things that look similar to what they already found. So yep. in, in Drupal's core search, you can weight um, like taxonomy terms on a node to be higher than other things. Mm -hmm. Can you be even more precise on this? Like you say, you can have one particular page come up. Can you say like if this page, you know, say say for this word, this page should be weighted higher, but not necessarily like force it to the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do that. You can say things like. Blog posts are more important than news items, or vice versa, for instance. Yeah. So th there has to be something that ties you to metadata, you know, for that node or that entity that then you can use. You know, I mean, you could define a field that you know does that, but the the out of the box behavior is something like you know null type, for instance. And text extraction is nice because you can, um, along with Tika that you add onto Solar, you can do things like extract the text that's within PDFs or Office documents, you know, there's a growing number of, of file types that it supports. Uh, so that's nice because you can actually match things that are within files. So let's uh, go into Solar and, oh, one question. Yeah. So is it able to travel Content that is re on another node that's related. So I want to show all mm -hmm. all blog posts with my search word that mm -hmm. are authored by someone who is tagged with X. Yeah, that that could happen. So you absolutely could take it through, like, through the tree and stuff. Yeah, the thing is, so for instance, maybe a lot of people know views, right? So you would create a view when you have a complex set of data, like you maybe you may have a um, let's say you have a user entity, and maybe you have some uh, profile type of entity, maybe it could be a node, and maybe you want to link those two together. You don't want the biography, for instance, to be here, it'll be over here. Um, and then, you know, if you're building a view and you want to show users that match something that, that is in the profile, 
you create like a relationship, you know, in a view. In solar, sadly, you can't do that, you know, out of the box, like, you know, build this up. You need to write a little bit of custom code to be intelligent enough to denormalize the data. Because solar is basically getting stuff from a lot of places and then just shoving it into a single uh, document is what's called. Like a document in solar is, is the single thing that contains all your fields and this is like a thing that will show up as a, ch as a search result. So again, for instance, for a node, uh, let's say we're building out a solar document for a node, we would need to get you know, data from, from all over the place. Maybe I have the user ID that wrote this, but I don't have his name. That's somewhere else. So I need to bring it in and write it here, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, even like taxonomy terms or some, some other data. Or maybe even a node reference. You know, maybe I have a, a, some node reference here, and I want to show what the title is, and you know, that to be matched in search results. I need to actually do a node load for that, bring it in, show it, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of that is out of the box behavior. Some of it isn't. You know, you'll need to figure out what, what is and what isn't supported out of the box. And for some, it's, I mean, if it isn't, then there's probably either a module that already does it or you write it yourself. And there are hooks for that. And it's quite simple. So, yeah. So, what I was going to do is um, let me actually tell you how you would install solar. Um, I mean, maybe a few people have done it, and it's quite easy. You need Java. You just download solar from the Apache site. That's basically over here. So you go to uh, lucineapache.org, and then you know there's versions here of uh, solar that you can just download. So let me see. This is the, yeah, here we go. So these are the various versions of solar. There are actually a lot of versions that you can use. Uh, for instance, I personally work a lot with 3.5, just because that's a version we use a lot of, at, you know, in Aquia. Uh, but there are much newer versions that do, uh, you know, a lot of nicer things. Uh, but locally, I happen to have solar 3.5, so uh, I'll actually show you how that looks. So you download solar, you just put it somewhere, uh, you uncompress it. And then you need to configure Solar. That's all done via text and XML files. And gladly, uh, if you download any of the uh, Drupal modules available for, for Solar, let's say like Apache Solar search integration module, that comes with a uh, folder that has the Solar configuration there. So you just copy those files into the Solar config folder, and then you run it. So I can show you how that looks. So I actually have that installed right here. My conf folder is here. Oh, let me actually, solar conf. And there are all the configuration files. So I won't go into detail about what, is, what each of these does, but let it be said that these, uh, mostly these, all of these came from the Drupal module, you know, fresh from Drupal.org. And you can modify each of these to whatever you want. Normally, you shouldn't just go around editing all the files. Maybe the XML files you shouldn't really ever need to modify. But the text files are free, uh, you know, freely. I mean, you can toy with them uh, much, you know, free, much more freely than the rest of the files. So then you can just run solar here. So Java jar, start the jar. So what this does, it takes the configuration from some from these files and some other files and they just run a web server. This is running on um, port 8983, and we can go there and show you how that looks. So, here we go. So yay, it works. If I were to control C out of this, this would no longer work. So, I can show you what the solar admin looks like. This is basically a GUI that just shows you, uh, you know, some basic information about solar. Since I already have data in here, I can show you what uh, my fields look like, um, so I'll do that right now. This basic page just says, okay, you have 729 things indexed in Solar. Uh, you have 56,000 different terms, which are basically tokens. They're not real words. They're words that already went through processing, so 
You know, things like worker, like I mentioned, may not be stored as worker. They may, you know, already be stored as work. Um, and there's a version and some other things that, you know, we won't touch right here. But we can then look at the fields that we have. And all of these are defined in the schema, but not explicitly. Some may be, the, uh, you know, explicitly defined in, a, in one of the XML files. But the thing is, and, and the cool thing about Solar, is you can define wildcard type fields. So in MySQL, you would go in and define every single possible field, right, in your, in your tables. However, in Solar, you can say, okay, I want whatever field name that starts with, let's say, I am, I want that to be of this type and have this behavior. So then, just by feeding data to Solar, you know, you can say, oh, I now want a field that's called I am three or I am blah. It'll automatically create that field and it'll be searchable and it will have the behavior of the I am field that you defined earlier on. So here we go. For instance, this field, I am asterisk. And then it says what field type it is and it, then it kind of tells you what pro kind of processing it goes through and it already shows you a little bit of what data is in it. Can anyone imagine what's in this field? Like this is, this is the part generated by Drupal, this was de defined in the schema, so what's this? Version? No. <laughs> Close, but no. So this is vocabulary ID six. So this is, text this is a place where we keep taxonomy terms. However, we keep them not, in this, in this particular field, we only keep the, the ID of the term. We don't keep the actual term tax, like the name of it. That's kept somewhere else. So we can actually look for that right now. Um, so for instance, I think, here we go. So I'm looking for the other BID six. Here we go, it's way down here. So these now are the word representations of those other terms. So you may be wondering, why are we keeping them in that way? So we want these which are, you know, word representations of those terms to match type searches. The others we're keeping to do faceting. We're like, you know, give me everything that has the category of Mexico. But it's not just Mexico as a word. I actually want this specific term that's, you know, this Mexico that is within maybe this, you know, is, ter is the term ID number two instead of maybe this other Mexico, which is term ID number 50. You know, this would match things, but the other, the numbered versions we use for actually matching, you know, like a category. And this would be, you know, more like machine-like, uh, not like a human-entered uh, sort of uh, query. So yeah, so this is what, uh, this is what you can use to see what's in your index. Uh, we, things like entity ID just keeps like, uh, we have entity ID number two, number three, number four. These all happen to be nodes. You can't tell by this, but it just happens that we have one document that's, you know, with entity ID two, one with number three, et cetera. And it will ha then we have things like site, what the site name is. In this case, this is the, you know, the name of my local site, et cetera, et cetera, you know. So a lot of these fields are processed differently. So for instance, if we, we can have uh, some fields uh, that are different types, for instance, textpel, it's a type of field that doesn't get processed that much because we want to use this later on for suggesting the spell checker suggestions. So you can see how these look like, these words look like normal words. English, Spanish, pictorial works, etc. They're not split up. They're only lowercase. They're not even uh, stemmed. Congress says. This wasn't like stemmed down to Congress. But if we look at some other let me go to, for instance, uh, where do I want to go? Content. Here we go. So this is the content field, and this this is another type. This is of type text. This goes a lot more. This has a lot more heavy processing than the other fields. Maybe we can really tell by these. I, I'll actually expand this to show more terms. 
So you can see how some language, some words are already uh, cut down, like language or languages or I don't know some other <laughs> derivative got cut down to this. The script, maybe you know, descriptor, description, etc. So some fields keep words, you know, in separate ways. They're processed differently. This actually, you can you can't see a place here where we're actually keeping. Uh, you know, a phrase, like multi-word phrase. And this all has rhyme and reason, but I'll go into that soon. So another thing we could do is I'll actually go back to the presentation to make sure I'm not missing anything. So I already went a lot, you know, over a lot of these, but it's just basically that, you know, comparing to MySQL in case, you know, anyone was wondering. Schema XML again is a file that defines those fields and how those behave. So you can use this via HTTP. You can see that that we're already doing that via, you know, just this page. Um, but to actually get results, let me just type in a quick search here. You can see by my search history that <laughs> I've done a lot of testing here. So I'll just do like query equals Mexico. So this is a very simple solar query, and I you can you know look at what's going on here, it's returning XML. Each of these doc are, you know, results, are solar documents, and ev each of these has fields. And you can see how even their type is defined here, like Boolean, ne name, and then BS, promote. So this is the solar, I mean, this is the, the Drupal property for a node of the promote to home page. Right? You see how you, know, you have that checkbox, um, you know, just below the nodes where you edit them? That's that. Status is, is it published or not? Sticky is sticky on top of list. And you can probably guess what BS means. It's not what you're thinking. It's Boolean <coughs> single. <laughs> so this is just a true-false kind of uh, field. And translate, false. You know. Bundle is just a bundle name. This is the node type, basically. And you can see how we are also have bundle name, you know, even in you know the actual human readable name of this of this uh, node type. And content is a field that's used in Solar, where we are basically rendering the whole node, but not the title, and just stuffing everything in here. So this would even accept HTML or whatever. I mean, this just gets. If you were to look at the Drupal function, it would be like node view of the node take the output, shove it in here. And then Solar just processes it, processes, processes it in a way that you, know, you can search. Okay. How does it handle the fact that Drupal before it displays content as the, the input filters? It's, so this XML that we're seeing right here, mm -hmm. is it the raw database of the node, or is it actually being processed through the, the, the text filters? This is what Drupal gives it. So basically, you can you can store. Um, I mean, you can send this, whatever you can send whatever kind of text or whatever you know it. it you can transfer as data. Um, so basically, what I can tell you that this does again, it's kind of just whatever is sent out by node view for that view mode is just put in here. The thing is, when I ask for it back from Solar, it's already processed. So internally, well, internally it might it may be stored. My, I mean, it may be storing the H ones, H twos, all of that markup, and I can actually boost on that markup, or do some searching just for that markup within this field. Um, what I get back when I actually ask for it is I get this version back, which is kind of sanitized. But I can very easily create a field that has no processing where I can just store raw data that you know is good because sometimes you just want for instance to just use solar and not do a node load to get the actual for instance maybe you have an image and you want to just store everything for that image like the the URL or you know maybe the whole representation of you know of, of the whole themed image so you can even like create a field that with no processing that, that that'll just come back as is from solar in this case this doesn't this this has processing but you can you know store data in solar if you want. For performance reasons that would be, you know, why why you would do that. Yeah. So
So the content field, that, that's the, I guess, the search theme content, right? From yeah. Drupal. The search view mode by default? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's ways to, to make this. So for instance, if I were to look at my, uh, so this is the actual site that, power, that you know, provided the data. So I'll go into my library item bundle or no type. And then, you know, if I go look at the Mattis display here, this is actually what's being sent out um, to Solar. I don't think, I haven't set up a, like, a different uh, view mode, but I could. Uh, but this is basically whatever gets rendered onto the node, all of this is just, again, rendered and then shoved off to Solar. So if I were to look at one of these nodes, um, you would probably see that. So for instance, this one is, um, this is the actual, actual XML, I mean HTML. So if I look this up in Solar, uh, let me go back to this. I can actually do something like this. Uh, no, it's filter query equals entity ID. Right. So this is that. Uh, is that. <laughs> So you can see how this table, I think, all of that got put in here. You know, even this, the location, the call number, check shelf, ogram stacks. This is basically something that you would see at a library. I mean, this is the use case. Um, so all of this data is just basically shoved into this content field. I could also like split it out if I wanted. In this case, I'm not. I mean, I didn't write any of the code or any glue code to actually say, you know, I want strand pearl to show up in this other solar field. But however, the subjects, which are you know basically terms, they are shown up here. Um, so here we go, like SMVID author. Those are basically, since, since that's down here, you know, it's a term, that's showing up here. And again, book, because I have a vocabulary for document type, I have a vocabulary for genre, language, blah, blah, blah. All of this has to do with the book. It doesn't have to do with Drupal. It's more, you know, I define these fields and then when I build this, you know, this is what's in the node. And you can see more data in there. Like, label is what, for some reason, uh, you know, that was a decision. Instead of saying title, they decided to name it label. I wasn't in on that decision. I was just, I came in later on, so. <laughs> right? Yeah. So if you were to use, I don't know if you know, maybe you can talk about this, but if you use Tika to index documents, right, like PDFs or mm -hmm. Word docs or whatever, then the, the entire document ends up in the content field? I think, I think not. Actually, it gets, it gets put into another field. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. Uh, but I think it is. It just, you know, happens to be somewhere else. And then at query time, there's a hook that defines, you know, just the Apache Solar module calls out everyone and says, guys, what fields should I be searching on? So if, for instance, if we have a module that defined that we should be uh, searching across files as well, it would say, oh, please add this field, which, you know, has all the extracted text from all of these files. So um, that's, you know, that's, that's how normally the modules work. The, I think this module itself defines the hooks, like hook implementations to, you know, get things, you know, working. Okay. And you can see how we have also admin build this, you know, and this is the formatted version of the admin user and then a URL, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a lot of data here, but by itself, as you can see, it's not enough to build a node fully because it doesn't have the full HTML. It could, again, if you build the hooks, but it's not enough. Um, it's mostly meant to serve as, let's see, I, maybe I want to search for this. Right. So you can see probably, um, th this is the result right here. So it showed up. And you can see how it's doing, doing the highlighting. Uh, you can see you know, how it's even like doing multiple highlighting because it just you know, appears a lot. Um, but actually these others, showed up further up in the search results. One question could be, why does this have a YY, but this doesn't? So the thing is, with Solar, 
you actually don't index in real time. You want to index in cron runs or you know just whenever you actually want to do big, big updates because it's an expensive operation. It's not super, super bad. I mean, I could run index and right now my computer would not fall over, but you don't want to do it every single time because you know you may have a lot of customers searching against solar. You don't want to place extra load on solar you know, just because you want you know, near real time results, which you won't get anyway because solar just has to wait a few minutes to actually have things uh, committed to the index so they, they show up. So this is wrong. But if I were to actually re-index now, it would you know, show up correctly, I think in around 10 seconds or so, because that's how I have solar set up here. OK, yep. In the search results, does it go through node access to make sure that the user who's searching can actually see the content that's displayed? Yes, glad you asked that. So if I were to look at the modules, uh, I mean, and for now I'm, I'm talking about the Apache solar suite of modules, which, which are basically Apache Solar module, and then there, there's other than build on top of that. Um, so there is an option, I mean, there's a module that comes with Apache Solar module uh, where you can enable that. It's called Apache Solar Access. So actually Apache Solar. So I have that disabled right here. It wouldn't make sense even to turn it on because I have no really restrictions. I have no real restriction on this site. But if you have something like, again, maybe private groups, forums, whatever, it would kick in. So the thing is, it would if you were anonymous, it would only show you what an anonymous user would see. If you were not, it would then calculate what your permissions are and then add that to the query that goes to solar. So even though solar, if you have access to solar, you can actually see you have the keys to the kingdom and you can see everything, just like you know, if you had access to MySQL. Uh, in solar, the search will be restricted you know, in terms of what the user types, unless there's some weird module that's actually saying, eh, don't use that, you know, which could happen. <laughs> Are some of the administrative functions of Drupal also stored in solar, like the module list, like you know, that search box up there? No, basically, I mean, Drupal normally runs on a database server. And that's the thing, because Drupal does come with a really nice implementation of search, which works, but it's not, it doesn't scale. And it's based on MySQL. I mean, it's based on whatever you give it as a database backend. So that's why you want to use Solar, because it does all of these nice things out of the box in a way more scalable and quick and you know, way more advanced way. Um, you don't really want to do full text searching in MySQL. You know, you can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so, so yeah, the answer is no, not for this. You could, but maybe you don't want to. <laughs> okay. Back in the Drupal 6 days, you mm -hmm. see was the, the Drupal search of choice, and now we've moved to Apache Solar. What is the difference between those two, and why did that transition happen? So Apache Solar is actually an implementation of Lucene. Lucene is a more of a... Um, it's more, it's more a basic set of, uh, I mean, it's, it's a set of code that you, know, you can use to build things like solar on, you know, using basic, I mean, using Lucene. If you were to use solar and then store, I mean, if you were to look at the um, files generated by solar, um, they're actually Lucene compatible. If you have something else that you know, does Lucene, uh, then you can use these files. Like, like Probably. Search? I think Which so. Is based on Lucene? I think so, yeah. Maybe, maybe not, I won't go out and say every single thing because the files that are generated actually only make sense if you're using the same schema. You see, because yeah, you know, yeah. it's like MySQL. Yeah, you can use my, these um, you know, MySQL databases on Percona, but not if you somehow wanted a different schema. You know, they, so the, da the data that's in the files is binary compatible. I mean, it's the same format, but it actually only makes sense if you're using the same schema everywhere, which you won't probably. And the schema here was basically an agreement within, you know, be between a lot of people saying, oh, I need this, I need that. And then, you know, like the needs grew. And then, oh, we need somewhere to store t taxonomy terms. Oh, we need, you know, a, fi a field type that can store files or, you know, whatever. So it kind of grew and grew to the point where there was a different schema altogether for another set of modules, search API, search API solar. 
And then, you know, the maintainers came together and say, you know, we can really merge these two together because we're doing the same things, we're just naming them differently. So then that's when, you know, uh, the two projects kind of merged, at least in terms of the schema files. They're compatible. So you can have a single solar server that can have data from both suites of modules. So that, that's nice, you know. And actually, it's compatible between several versions of Drupal that use, in this case, only Apache Solar module. There's no search API for Drupal 6, only for Drupal 7. But if you're using Apache Solar for Drupal 6 or 7, you can actually use the same solar index, right? So that's you know, something extra that's nice. So further illustrating what you can do with, with Solar, I mean, you can send post requests to it as well. And then you can you know, do things like delete stuff from the index or you know, add stuff to the index, et cetera. There's logging and there's you know, error logging, et cetera, that you can also look at because it's basically a web server you know, that serves up search results. And the schema, um, I can probably show you a little, a little bit of how that looks. Um, but rather than do that, I think I'll better show an example because that's more um, illustrative. So let me go back to my solar server. Where is it? Here we go. So the schema, I, I know, I mean, just because I know by memory that it does have a lot of uh, different field types. So when you search, when, I, when you normally enter a search, uh, you know, just like I did here, and you know, I was searching for Mexico or something, um, a few fields get searched. And you can, um, you can kind of get a feel of how that actually works when you do what we call a um, analysis in solar. So for instance, if I search for films, but I also search for film, you know, you can see how I actually matched films when I search for film. Maybe I can do the work example. So works, 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 working, you know, and notice how that got highlighted as well, um, et cetera, right? So I can show you how some of these works uh, with a few examples. Let me go back here and I'm gonna go to analysis and I'm going to say to solar, I want to analyze a field type that I have that is called text. So text is a field that does a lot of processing. So, you know, things would get matched um, because it's do, it, again, it's ha it has a lot of process. So for instance, I'm just gonna go and you know, type something. Type something, some commas, and one, two, three, <coughs> A, B, C, and then maybe, um, I don't know, just do that. So you can see how whenever this would make it into the index, if I, if I from Drupal, I send this string into the index, into this field, you can see how things get processed and split up. So for instance, first you know, it gets like tokenized because there's spaces. Then it gets further tokenized. You know, for instance, I get a version that has the comma but another one that doesn't. This version has you know, the whole one, two, three, A, B, C exclamation mark, but the, it also is indexing a version that has just one, two, three, A, B, C. So things like camel case, also get split up, but not. Like you can see how we keep the original version, which is also stemmed, you know, camel cas, maybe because it wants to prepare in case you want to do something like camel casing, <laughs> which will actually end up at the same thing. Or <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you can see how we store camel, ca camel cas, case, this is just, you know, from the second one. Let me just delete this because I'm just confusing people. <laughs> so you can see how we, we keep all of these versions. So if I were to now try a query here, like if I just want to search for a case, it will match. These blue mean, these blue uh, cells mean that there was a match there. And so this would be a place that you can test queries against, you know, hypothetical values of fields. And you can see how, you know, again, things match. So case one to three would actually return a document that had this as its content. 
Right. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, okay, why do you get, for example, out of something? Why do you get uh, so bad? <laughs> but you don't get thing, for instance. Right, because <laughs> there's no rule to actually split something as two words. You could, for instance, add that rule by adding a synonym that says, you know, something is the same as some space thing. And then it would actually create on the index that, that version as well. But it does not automatically look for words and words. So it doesn't pull out meh from uh, something. Yeah, I, don't know. Know. <laughs> I don't know why I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it does because it's camel case is actually camel case. So if you wrote that camel case all lowercase, it would not come up. With right. It would, I mean, yeah, because the, in this case, the rules define that a changing case or a change in between numbers and, and, and letters, that means, hey, I may want to split here. So it actually goes ahead and splits and then stores the original and stores the new process version. So yeah. So, so is there something then that said, for example, for something, for example, to take the first six letters? Is that where that's coming from? I'm just wondering what. Oh, that was ING. So it's like, uh, how you conjugate it only uh, <laughs> Right. Uh, this is. Yeah. This is part of the linguistic, one of the linguistic filters. It kind of knows that in the English language, you know, you could have ing, er, s, you know, that just are adding things, you know, are adding some, some sort of a linguistic, you know, component to words, and that we can get rid of those. So that's just basically the, the uh, component that's being in use here. You can use, again, you can use a lot. There are a lot of uh, ways to do stemming. This is called stemming, by the way. Um, so this is the Porter stemmer, I think. There's something else called Snowball Porter stemmer. They're just like different algorithms. They're all available. Um, they're mostly all compiled in Solar. So you don't have to do anything. You just download the latest version and they're there. You just need to tell, via the schema, you say what the behavior is for this. So yeah, any questions around? No. How kind of this happens? Yep. Is, uh, w what are some other fields that you can analyze? And do they all kind of, um, sh do they all, does the analysis for different fields look similar to text, or are they completely different? They're all over the place. Some look, some do, like text is one of those that does a lot of processing. Because we want to be as, you know, we want to offer as many possibilities to the index so that there will be a match for the user. That could be bad because maybe you're doing like too, too much of a good job <laughs> and you're doing things like I mentioned, like parking then becomes equal to park, which is not at all the same thing. I mean, well, if you're looking for like parks and recreation, things like that, right? Um, so um, you can use some other field, you can tweak the schema, but yeah, there's things like text spell, which is a different type of field. Ooh, wait. Spell is it, I think? No. Oh, this is a name. I'm sorry. Because I was looking at a type. So you can see how for this, we actually never query the spell field, but you can see how it gets like not processed at all. It's just the same thing. Um, let me actually look at the schema so I can show you how those fields work. So for instance, let me search for the text type. So this is, this is you know, part of the schema, and then it has two stages. Let me just compress these. So you can define what the behavior for the field is at indexing time, so when data comes into Solar, and you can define what the behavior is at query time, right? So any change in this needs to just delete all the stuff from the index and just start over. Because you know it has to go, go through all the processing to actually make it into this. This, you can change and then just restart Solar, not have to re-index, and it'll you know, match that behavior. So for instance, for text, we have a lot of things. For instance, this first part is saying get rid of things like, you know how in German we have this symbol, the beta symbol? Well, this converts that beta symbol into this. Or if we have like this in Spanish, it converts it into this. Or we, if we have this, it converts it into this. 
You know, this like simplifies uh, non-English characters into sort of English sort of equivalents. This uh, tells how to split up things via white space. And then stop filters just says, you know, look at this file and whatever is there, like a, the, you know, some words that I don't want, they just get, you know, like eliminated. Actually, those are, uh, I don't have the, that open. Stop words. You know, for instance, these words, a, n, and, you know, et cetera. So, and this, you know, has some other more complex ways of splitting up words, like, um, for instance, uh, catenate words, catenate numbers. Mm. So this one is probably the one that we saw already, split and case change. You know, I am going to split on camel case, for instance. And then preserve or original means also keep the original version. If I were to set this to zero, then I wouldn't have the original one, I would just have the new split version, you know. And there are some other things here, like, you know, if it's, if it's shorter than three characters, then don't index it. Or if it's longer than 100, don't index it. Um, Snowball Porter, this is doing the uh, stemming. Remove duplicates, tries to remove duplicates. It always, it not always does, but tries to. And then I have sort of the same thing going to the query because this part has to do with the data that's in Drupal, you know, that makes it into solar. And that's like, on cron runs. This part down here, the query part, this gets run with every single user type query, right? So that, that's kind of what was happening when I was doing this, um, again, um, text, and just asking for something here. So you can see how this part, this is the index, how the index analyzer worked, and this is what the query analyzer worked. So this behavior down here is controlled by this part that says analyzer type equals query, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of others, like your question was, are there, are there other fields that do different processing? Yeah, so for instance, this is an unstemmed text field. So it's just basically the same as, an as the text field, but it doesn't do stemming. So maybe you want to use that for, you know, whatever. And then there are other words, like someone asked about, hey, there's math in that something, you can actually do that. There's this called an engram filter, and it actually stores all the various ways of, you know, the substrings within the words. It goes ahead and indexes all of that as separate things. So something would end up as S, S O, S O M, S O M E. You know, it would end up like with, you would end up actually with a huge index, and we don't recommend that. <laughs> and there are a lot of things here that, you know, you would actually, and I would call upon you to actually take a look. These are all like, again, included with the module files. So you should probably take a look at that. So I already did this. I already tried a few things with solar. I didn't mention, but I'll do so now. There's this very nice Chrome extension, which maybe some of you already know, where you can just, um, it's called Advanced REST Client, and you can just very easily split up, issue certain parameters to solar or to whatever uh, REST-based service, um, and then it just provides you the results down here. So it's a nice GUI way of interacting. You can actually save your queries and do, you know. So this is basically the same as going to solar over here, you know, doing selects, but in a way more nice way. Well, depends on how you. <laughs> how you view it. So I'll just go over this real quickly. I mean, this is just to illustrate. Someone mentioned, is this like a, like a MySQL sort of querying um, language? Well, not really. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with Solar, and you basically just define them out um, after Solar, select, and then you define your query. You can say like, you know, start at row zero, give me 10 rows, and just query everything. And then the queue just means you could do several syntax. You can do something like field name, colon, and then words to match there. So for instance, this, this, you can do this, or you can do this if you have something in your schema that al already defines what fields will be searched. Like I just searched for Mexico and it worked because in the schema I have something that's called 
default fields. And it turns out that uh, there's like a set of five or six fields that are just always searched if you're not defining what field to search in. Oops, I kind of skipped this. Another way is you can define filters. So you can say things like, oh, actually, wait, um, these are not filters. These are whenever you type your search via Q, you can define what fields it will search in. But not only that, you can also define boost. For instance, Mexico houses. But if I add this, matches that are in the content field are way more important than the rest of the fields are 40 times as important. It's not really 40 times, it's, you know, it's, there's some internal <laughs> function that I can't really understand that <laughs> actually does, you know, all that scoring. Uh, but you, the, the interesting thing is you, you can again uh, balance and you can say maybe the label is more important or less important than this other field and you can play with all of those. And actually in Drupal you have a very nice GUI to just define that. It's, it's all, you know, just there. So, and you can do more things. Uh, you can turn on the spell checker. Uh, you can define what fields you want back. Maybe you don't want everything, you just want a few things. You can add facets, and facets are interesting because you know that's one of the nice features in Solar. You'll automatically get counts for the categories that you matched. You know, for instance, if I type Mexico, I want to know that I have 10 books, three DVDs, five VHS, you know, cassettes, two CDs, etc. And then I can further filter on that. That's part of the, GUI, the the GUI. But the thing that returns me those counts is just in Solar, and it all returns in the same set of data when I, you know, um, do the request to Solar. So I can actually show that uh, right now because that's an interesting part. Okay. So I'll do query equals Mexico. <coughs> And then um, I want only five results, but I want to turn on faceting. And I want facet fields equals, I'm going to say entity type. So, no, actually, I don't think it's available. As it feel equals bundle. Yeah. Hmm, I think I'm missing something. As it would true. Oh, facet. I always get that wrong. It's not FL. Field. Here we go. So here we know that we have 702 items that are of this bundle type. And how do you see those in Drupal? Well, it's here. So when I did the search, Drupal is actually doing adding a lot of things to that solar query. It's not just searching for work. It's saying things like, you know, add this facet, that facet, blah, blah, blah. And then when they come back, they just get rendered, you know, by, in this case, it's the facet API module. It takes that in, and it knows what those mean, what those numbers mean from solar, and it just shows the human readable version. So this is faceting, and this is cool because then I can, oh, I only want to see the six DVDs that you actually have that match this, and here they are. Are you able to do a multi-select? Like, so in the genre one, you've got you know, 15 options. Mm -hmm. You say, show me three things, so I want just the videos and the nonfiction or something under genre. Yeah, actually, I'm not sure if I have that set up. Yes, I do, actually. So I, I actually have two solar servers set up right now. One that is remote, it's Sacway Search powered, and the other is this local host. So here I do have that option. Yeah, for instance, if I just, let me actually get rid of the search. And this is a nice thing actually, kind of like in a view where you can just see results without you know, actually doing a search. You can do that with solar as well. It's just a setting in the module. You can just you know, get everything. And then you get counts and you can, you can, without typing anything, you can start drilling down. You know, like the DVDs, but I also want the VHS cassettes because I happen to have a <laughs> Betamax recorder somewhere. Um, and then, you know, you can start filtering and then if you want, oh, now I want to, you know, 
just this. Can and then you create several pages in your site that are a search. Um, let's say based on you know the usability of your site, it makes sense to have a, a page say dedicated to searching blog posts. So you want that, but then you still want your overall site search as well. Uh huh. Yeah, actually, I have that example set up right now, so I can I can show you that. For instance, I may want a DVD search page that only shows DVDs, and I don't have I don't want to have people clicking on you know the DVD after the fact. So I can do that right now. So if I go to the Apache Solar Search settings, there's this. It's called Pages and Blocks, and then I build this. Let's call it. It's just a search test search page. I'll go ahead and edit this. And I'll just relabel this as DVD search page. And then, this is the path, and then this, this is kind of the hard thing because this doesn't have a nice GUI where you can just select what you want. You have to know this. And you can get this from another search. I mean, if, you, if I went back, I would just look at the URL. I can see what the field search for is. It's already pre-filtered for you. Right. Oh, I forgot to enable this. Yeah, so this will just be essentially the same thing, but, uh, okay, and did I enable this? Oh, now that'll enable it. Okay, so now I can go here, and here we go. This is my DVD search page. So all of this is already filtered by DVD, and you can see how this is, you know, it's, sh it's still showing. I could remove this block if I wanted to, but, you know, still there. And you can see how it's just showing those 53 results just, you know, faceted by whatever. And if I search here for you know, New York, right. Now, this is still, you know, in the DVD search page. I haven't moved out of this. So all of these are, again, you know, related to that pre-existing filter. It's just like that small piece of the universe that's showing. Okay, so this that I kind of showed in a screenshot, I can go into and can show you, you know, what's going on here. Um, I'm not sure if I actually want to do any large, you know, explanation of this. I, I don't really understand all of it myself. I can tell you things like um, the document frequency or how many times a certain term appears has to do with you know the 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 final score i can tell you that you know that boosting that we're defining um, across what fields are searched for instance i have this this side set up so that taxonomy taxonomy names are boosted at 8 labels which are you know basically no titles are boosted at 13 um, tos name i forget what it, what it is content is just the basic again the whole rendered thing is at 40, um, taxonomy names are at 8, etc. You can, you can control all of these via uh, the module configuration here. So I can go into settings and then bias, and then you can do things like things that are sticky at the top of the list should really move up. Um, the rest I'm just ignoring. Type biasing, I'm saying, you know, maybe library items should be more important than others. I'm still, I'm not caring here. This is where you would say things like blog posts are more important than news or whatever. And then this is how matching works. Like the search that you type, the, the words that you type, how they're matching up. And this, this is what I just went over via the debug. Are those Fibonacci numbers? I'm not sure. Do they look that like? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Even these. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not I'm not sure how this actually, how this scale was, you know, agreed on, but it might make some sense, you know. Maybe this is an industry wide standard that I'm not aware of uh, when, you know, solar searching or whatever. Uh, but yeah, this is what they came up with. And basically, I mean, if you wanted to, you can mess with this more specifically than what the select offers via a module, via some custom code. When you set up a site, which uh, contrib modules do you usually include or do you enable? Okay. 
So I can also go over those quickly. Um, and I think just I'll close this out because this is the part where I finish talking about solar and more about Drupal, uh, which you know is not that long. So um, these these are just some of the examples that I was meaning to do. But I already showed you like the camel case thing. The only thing I didn't do was go into an actual like non-English <laughs> uh, sort of um, search, and I didn't do the synonyms, which is interesting, but you can do things like saying, don't touch parking. Parking should always be parking. Or, you know what, people are searching for parking lots, but in all my content, I always use parking garages for some reason. Damn. So what you can do is you can you know, build a synonyms text file that has these mappings to what your you know, visitors are actually doing you know, that's different one from what your actual content is. And then, you know, you might be saying, oh, they're always misspelling stuff. So you can, you know, you can help them out. Why not? So for instance, if they constantly, you know, I just put in like two difficult words, but yeah, how many times have you, how many times have you had to, you know, misspell this word? Um, so yeah, you can just add all the misspellings in the sentiments file and just say, they're all the same. You know, let them pass. Let them have results. So that's, that's a nice thing that you can do as a site administrator for your users. So on to Drupal. So these are the basic things you need. It's basically Solar and either of these two modules. And then those really offer a lot of functionality out of the box. You know, basically what I just showed you, the, that DVD search page, uh, that way where you can boost things this differently, that's all out of the box. The facets, they're not actually you know, included here. That's actually uh, one of the other modules that you need to install, which is Facet API. That would be uh, probably the other thing that I would recommend as the base set of things uh, that you would do. Um, and I won't go over the settings because I already showed you some. But there are a lot of add-on modules that you can use. For instance, the part where we talked about Tika and the text extraction, that's called Apache Solar Attachments or search API attachments. Again, like there are different modules for each set of, like each family of solar related modules. So there's autocomplete as well. I actually maintain that module for uh, Apache Solar. So Apache Solar autocomplete is mine. If you want that with search API, there's another module that also does it, which is kind of based on mine, I think. Um, and there are more things. For instance, I have one cool module that uh, does um, the phrase, it, it boosts phrase matches. For instance, if, if I'm searching, and actually that shows, showed up on the um, Mexican art, let's say. Well, artists. This is the autocomplete, by the way. I mean, that's not out of the box. That's because I have the module installed. But it just, you know, it just works. And if you, I think, well, actually, the, I'm working on the new version, so this doesn't still do the spell checking. If you were to just type in some gibberish, it would probably say, did you mean, you know, like the same thing it would just show up here. Um, so what I was meaning to actually show you was this, where you can see how it would normally just search Mexican space artist, and then it would, you know, get processed. But it'll, it's also saying, I could also do with you matching Mexican artists as a phrase, and please do boost that a lot. That's just a single module that just alters the query so that whatever was typed just, you know, requeries it, but as a phrase with more boosting. So that's a nice module. It just, you just drop it in and it just does this. It just works. So that's cool. Um, things that add or alter data to be indexed. So for instance, uh, there's a display suite module that actually renders the whole node and then shoves it into solar. So then, when you see the results, you get a fully themed set of, I mean like fully themed node display, but it never queried the database. It all came from solar. So that's, that's one nice thing you can do. Um, solar configuration generators. For instance, um, I didn't touch this, but you can do, well, I actually mentioned that when you type a search, you can define some random node to always be the first or second or whatever result whenever you, you're searching for something. For instance, if I always, if someone searches for Aztecs, 
I always want maybe a guide or something that has to do with this to show up first. I can do that via the elevate.xml file. So you would need to go into Solar and then, you know, you enter your query text. This is not Aztex, this is Slytherin. <laughs> I, was, I was just uh, doing a quick example. And you then just say what item from the Solar index you want to show. So this is actually in there. So if I do this, if I, oh, wait. I'm still on Auth Research. Okay, so this is localhost. So you can see how this, even though there's no real word Slytherin inside there, it matched and it shows, right? I, I'm just forcing Solar to show this. If I wanted to also show that as a second search result, I could add this in. I could restart Solar. Bear with me, it takes like two seconds. And then search again, and it would probably show up as the second result. Oh, actually it didn't. Ugh. I thought it would. Okay. So the idea here is you just like define your best bets, you know. People are searching for whatever, for Disney or something, you know, and it's that time of the year. Yeah, time to, you know, put stuff artificially as the first sort of uh, set of results. Okay. And solar configuration generators, that's where I was at actually. So you can either code this yourself or you can use something that's called uh, best bets queries module. So this one actually, I, I created that Elevate XML from this. You just go into whatever node you want and then you add something. For instance, I not only wanted to show for that, I wanted to show for, I don't know, Disney. And then, you know, now both searches would you know, cause this to be the first search result. But first I have to go somewhere else and actually export that so that um, I have the, here we go. Did you say GUI to help you generate the code? Yeah. The file? Oh, actually, for some reason it didn't build you did, it. You did it for the other server, not the local host. Oh, okay. Uh, good catch. Okay, thanks. There you go, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, I have different th things here because I just assigned it to the different, to the wrong server. But yeah, it showed up here. So now this, I would just copy paste into the solar config, blah, blah, blah. The idea for this module is to actually just tell solar to fetch this remotely, and then solar, would, you would just restart it, it would fetch it automatically from your Drupal site as an XML endpoint, and no copying. It would just like, fetch it and work. Okay, and debugging. I already showed you the module that does debugging. It, it also does some other interesting things. For instance, this. I, maybe I have a question. Is this in the index already? Is this ready to be shown to everyone? So you hit devel, you hit solar index, and then you see, okay, show me if this is in solar and what it looks like. So this actually says it is indexed in both solar indexes. Is it cute for indexing? Curiously, it is. Even though it already is in the index, it's also cute for indexing. So this, this means that Drupal thinks this, will, this, need, this needs to be sent again to the index in the future, which it will, it will do eventually. Why? Probably because I edited, edited this somehow at some point in time. And then you can see what's in the index and you can see how this is what it looks like when I go query solar, get back data, this is what solar sent back. And then analyze query thing, you can run a search and see if you can find it, et cetera, et cetera, so, right. So this is, this is useful for why, is, why are things not showing up on the index? So I already did the demo quite extensively. And there's a few things that go wrong sometimes. So, hey, I can't search. And this is mostly from our support experience. So, hey, things are, you know, I can't really search. It doesn't work, or I can't init. So, usually it's because Drupal is not properly connected to solar. You know, there's some, something going on, network, solar is not running, et cetera. Drupal just doesn't want to index because bad code, you have a template, you have a Drupal go-to then, you know, within your 
PHP filtered node, which is all sorts of bad and ugly. Um, Solar returns data that makes Drupal barf. This happens specifically with Search API. It turns out that Search API gets stuff from Solar and then it doesn't use that to show the result. It actually does a node load to show it. So let's say you just deleted a thing from Solar. Uh, I mean, from Drupal, right? You deleted node one. And then someone runs a search for something that would return node one. Sadly, <laughs> um, since Solar says, okay, node one, that you should show that. And then Drupal says, oh yeah, I'm gonna load load node one. Oops, that's not here. Error, exception, fireworks. So <laughs> yeah, that happens often. Um, again, Solar returns data that makes Drupal barf. That's one of the things that happens. Solar down, check the logs, you know. Should be checking the logs. Sometimes even a customer can be, or visitor can be quite, you know, creative and they figure out a way to do a search that just causes a syntax error in solar and maybe that even brings down the server so it doesn't happen often but it could there could be bugs okay can you set it up if that if solar is down it uses the google search yes you could actually yeah there's an option for that cool. um other problems you know things are wrong they're just not showing you're not matching what i think they should be so maybe that you have something that's missing. You could use solar devel and figure out, you know. Or maybe there's a zombie item showing, you know. Why is this here? It, this doesn't belong to this site, huh? Or item from another site. Wow, this is from my dev site. I'm seeing this in production. Everyone can see it. Run. So the usual culprit is, since you can essentially, you know, set up a, a few more than a few Drupal sites to just use the same solar index this can happen you can have this you know maybe you have the same uh, copy of the site and you know your developers machines they're all writing to the same index and then you know they might even be writing to the production index that you know is what everyone's seeing so um, that happens and happens often uh, so you want to protect against that somehow uh, gladly, the modules have read-only mode, and there, you know, other things you can do, uh, you know, check for some sort of environment variable, and then just shut off um, writing to the index, etc. And then, you know, there are things like you thought it would match, but it doesn't, or you're getting things from uh, Peter Parker, you know, and you think you shouldn't, but you're searching for parking, and parking is the same as Parker, so. Add a synonym or add a prop word, you know, add something that, you know, would actually fix that. Um, yeah. Ooh. Okay. Right. Your solar server went down. There. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically Google saying, shut up. So I'm, I'm basically stopping here because I, um, this is all I had. And I basically wanted to hear if there are any more questions or anything else that you know anyone wanted to know. Could yep. You tell what does happen, or if you if you delete nodes from Drupal that are still in the solar index between that time and when the cron runs. So with um, with Apache Solar, there's no problem actually. Uh, and actually, if you have Search API with the proper hardening, where if it tries to do a node load, but you know there's no nothing there, and uh, I think I think that that was fixed in, in later versions actually. Uh, if it just couldn't find it, it wouldn't explode. But there there are some other problems where if you remove a module that takes care of some field and that field is being returned by Solar and then Solar wants Drupal to render it, but there's no module to handle it anymore. That's where things get nasty. Where you know you just need to. If you delete, like if you remove the module, you re really need to re-index sometimes because Solar will just have all this data that Drupal wants to render that it doesn't know how to. So that's that's what causes problems. But yeah, with Apache Solar module, that's less frequent, unless you have some custom code that you built that you know is actually doing. It. So yeah. Can you do searches on binary dialects? I mean, people, for instance, are searching for things like SKUs or UPC barcodes. So if they consist mostly of numbers, 
or you really alter the schema so that the things like letter, number, number, letter, letter, number doesn't actually tokenize it, it'll work. You know, because the, the out of the box behavior is tokenize those as separate things. So you will get things that don't really match or so a lot of things that don't matter. So it's meant to be used on plain text. You can be, I mean, if you want to match on, on field values that are integer or, you know, even dates or ranges, it, you can do it. The thing is, there's a component that's meant for text matching, and that's the one that you want to figure out how you want, want it to behave. The normal thing that everyone does is what I showed you. Okay. A lot of stemming, a lot of, you know, lower casing, camel casing, splitting, blah, 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 because that's just the normal thing everyone does, you know, to match as mo as, as as most as you as you can. Okay. And yep. it, it supports full UTF-8. It does, yeah. That's actually nice, yeah. Yeah, you can do you can do any language in Solar. I mean, it handles Japanese, Chinese, etc. With some of the libraries, you need to add in, for instance, for Japanese or Chinese or whatever. Maybe you're not thinking about that, but just say. I mean, it's it's robust enough that it, it can handle most anything. So that implies it also can support emoji as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.